so in the last class we have discussed the judiciary we have discussed the establishment of the supreme court uh, the appointment of the ad hoc judges we have discussed then very important article that we have discussed was the contempt of court we have discussed the prashant bhushan case and that supreme court will be a court of record then article 130 that is the supreme court will sit in delhi or in such other places or places as the chief justice of india may with the approval of president from time to time appoint we have discussed article 130 then we have discussed the original jurisdiction of the supreme court under article 131 where we have discussed that on what matter the supreme court have original jurisdiction then we have discussed the special leave petition under article 136 the review petition we have discussed article 137 then we came to article 141 that is law declared by supreme court is binding on all court and the article 143 that was the power of the president to consult the supreme court and as we have discussed that it is not compulsory for the president to take into consideration or the president is not bound by the the president is not bound by the advice that is given by the supreme court that was article 143 now today we are going to start with the important amendment that are being made in the indian constitution directly the question co- uh, comes and as a law student as a law aspirant it is a, it is essential for us to know that in which amendment what has been appeared so till 26th august 2021 all the important amendment we will be discussing the first is the first amendment act 1951 now this first amendment act 1951 it empowered the state to make the provision for the advancement of the socially and educationally backward classes and the most important is the question that is generally asked in the polity is by which amendment the ninth schedule was added in the indian constitution okay the ninth schedule for the protection of the land reform was added in the indian constitution so it is the first amendment act that is it empowered the state to make special provision for the advancement of the socially and educationally backward classes okay and the ninth schedule was added to the indian constitution by the first amendment act 1951 then the 2 3 4 5 6 are not that much important we will be discussing that amendment which are important from your exam perspective whatever it exam it is whether it is bhu msct clad judiciary whatever it is then we have the seventh constitution amendment so the second seventh constitution amendment is for the state reorganization act you must have known the andhra pradesh was di- divided then bihar and jharkhand was divided in 2000 so uttar uttar pradesh and uttarakhand was divided so uh, this division of the state and reorganization of the state is done by the state reorganization act and the first state to be reorganized was andhra pradesh the first state which was to be the first state to be reorganized was your andhra pradesh this is a very common question that you will generally get so the seventh amendment act 1956 introduced the state reorganization act then come the 10th amendment act the 10th amendment act it integrated the dadra and nagar haveli with the union of india and provide for their administration under the regulation of the president because it is a union territory so it was made uh, a union territory dadra and nagar haveli it was emerged into the into the union of india and it was made a union territory and so the power was given to the president as you know that in the uh, as you know that in the union territory it is ruled by the president means on the advice of the prime minister and council of minister then 13th amendment is the special status to the nagaland hai na the state status was given to nagaland and special provision as we know that there are special provision for nagaland just as we have article 370 for jammu and kashmir similarly we have special provision for the nagaland so this special provision was made for the nagaland and it was declared a state by the 13th amendment these are all the important that you must remember which is very important so making of nagaland as a state and special provision for it then we have the 24th amendment this 24th amendment is the golaknath case so when we have started our constitution lecture series that time we have discussed the golaknath case when we were, when we were discussing the preamble we have discussed the golaknath case keshavanand bharti case so it was in this case in the golaknath case we have we 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 have decided decide, uh, 
discussed in the beginning of the session that in this case golaknath case the parliament was not given the power to amend the fundamental right however rather uh, afterward in the keshavanand bharti versus union of india case the parliament was given the power to amend the constitution and the preamble apart from the basic structure of the indian constitution so 24th amendment is regarded as the golaknath case and another is the uh, it amended article 13 and 368 with the power of the parliament to amend the constitutional that is the golaknath case so generally the article 24th amendment is regarded as the golaknath case that we must know then come we come to the 42nd amendment act that is the mini constitution the 42nd amendment act is known as mini constitution so the most important thing that happened in the 42nd amendment was that our preamble was amended and apart from sovereign democratic and republic our preamble was made to sovereign socialist secular democratic republic each of this term that is sovereign socialist secular democratic republic we have discussed in the beginning of the session so we will not be discussing it once again and the unity of the nation was changed to unity and integrity of the nation only before it was before the 42nd amendment 1976 we had unity of the nation after the amendment it was made unity and integrity of the nation so the major amendment that was made in the 42nd amendment was the preamble amendment where apart from the sovereign democratic and republic india was made a secular and socialist country and apart from unity of nation then unity of nation word was changed to unity and integrity of the nation then the 42nd amendment introduced the fifth fundamental duties of the citizen that is article 51a that is part 4a of the indian constitution the 42nd amendment 1976 introduced the fundamental duties so these are the most important provision of the 42nd amendment act 1976 amendment of the preamble the unity of the nation was changed to unity and integrity of the nation and the introduction of the fundamental duties under article 51a that is a part 4a of the indian constitution was introduced then we come to the 44th amendment act so in the 44th amendment act what happened the life of the lok sabha and the state legislative assembly was reduced to 5 year means what happened by in the 42nd amendment it is not an important provision for the 42nd amendment so i have not discussed it here but for the 44th amendment it becomes an important provision that the lok sabha the tenure of the lok sabha and that of the state legislative assembly was changed in the 42nd amendment however in the 44th amendment it was the tenure was made the status quo that is the 5 year and then article uh, then uh, this 44th amendment cancel the 39th amendment the 39th amendment it had deprived the supreme court as we have while we were reading the president and the vice president we have discussed there that any dispute arising in the election of the president or the vice president will be dealt by the supreme court however the 39th amendment had deprived the supreme court of the jurisdiction to decide the dispute of the election of the president and the vice president but this 44th amendment restored this power of the supreme court and uh, the jurisdiction of the supreme court to decide the dispute concerning the election of the president and the vice president and this is a very important question of the polity of the bhc of the judiciary of the upsc that by which amendment of the indian constitution right to property was made a legal right by the 44th amendment 1978 right to property was taken out from the fundamental right and it was made a it was declared a legal right so two question arises from here first by which amendment the right to property was made a legal right that is 44th amendment second question that comes is right to property is a which right the fundamental right constitutional right legal right none of the above so the correct answer is legal right right to property is no more a fundamental right right to property is a legal right so that is all about 44th amendment in which this important provisions were done 52nd amendment we are discussing from the last 6 session 7 session what is 52nd amendment that is the 10th schedule introduction of the 10th schedule that is the disqualification of the member if they go if they vote against the party that we have all discussed from the last 7 session we are discussing the 52nd amendment act so this is the 52nd amendment act introduced the 10th schedule of the indian constitution now this is a very important question that generally comes and whenever you will be solving any of the um, polity book that time if there are 500 questions so at least 15 times you will be getting this question that by which amendment the voting age was reduced from 21 year to 18 year for the lok sabha and the assembly election so it is the 61st amendment act by the 61st amendment act the voting age 
by the 61st amendment act the voting age was reduced from 21 year to 18 year okay it was tell that now at the age of 18 also people understand that what should be there means the people should be it should be a participatory democracy people know people mature at this time people know that what is good for them and what is not good for them or who is good for them and who is not good for them so by the 61st amendment 1989 the voting age was reduced from 21 year to 18 year that is the 61 amendment 1989 then it is another very important and famous amendment that is the 69th amendment act 1991 all the amendment that we are discussing are important from any of the such amendment question can come so by the 69th amendment delhi was uh, given the national capital territory of delhi was means the delhi was made as the national capital territory of delhi as we know that before delhi our capital of india was calcutta Uh, okay, so the, this you have to remember. So, 69 Amendment 1991 it granted statehood to Delhi as the national capital territory of India. That is 69th Amendment. Now, the famous question and this you generally know also that 73rd Amendment. So, the 73rd Amendment is the Panchayati Raj system. Okay, the 73rd Amendment is the introduction of the Panchayati Raj system. That is the self government. Okay, now what you have to remember here. See, so part nine. part 9 was added by the 73rd amendment act 1992 to make the provision for the panchayati raj institution okay and a three model panchayati raj system was introduced and a three model panchayati raj system was introduced which was having reservation for the scheduled caste scheduled tribe in the proportion of the population and one third of the seat is reserved in every panchayat for women this is something which we are demanding even in the Lok Sabha that one third of the seat uh, also of the Lok Sabha should be for the women. So the seventy third amendment it introduced the nine schedule. Okay, what is nine schedule? We will be discussing just after the amendment today only. So the nine schedule introduced the Panchayati Raj institution. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Just uh, sorry. The eleventh schedule talks about the function and the power of the Panchayati Raj institution, not the ninth schedule. The part nine of the Indian Constitution. It was the part nine of the Indian Constitution, and the schedule is eleventh schedule, a new schedule. Today we have a total of twelve schedule. No, so the eleventh schedule was introduced by the seventy third amendment act, nineteen ninety two. This eleventh schedule talk about the power and the function of the Panchayati Raj institution, and this seventy third amendment stated that one third of the seat in the Panchayat will be reserved for the women. Uh, if you have seen the web series Panchayat, I hope, I guess, if you have seen, if you have not seen, then also it is okay. Once you get the time, you must see it after your examination and all. So, in the Panchayat, it is it is shown that that the that the head, the mukhya of the village is a the elected mukhya is a woman. Okay, the elected mukhya is a woman. However, all the work, all the function of the village as the pramukh, the pramukh of the village is done by the by her husband. Okay. Even the thing is that it is very beautifully shown. It is very, it is very, it is very beautifully shown there that uh, it is very beautifully shown there that even that woman who is the sarpanch of the panchayat of that village, she even does not know to sing the national anthem of our country. That is Janagana Mana. She does not know to sing even the national anthem. And on every Independence Day and Republic Day, okay, her husband only holds the national flag. So. that is that is a very very beautiful web series in which the reality is shown in which the reality is shown this happens that is not only in the web series it is the reality web series is a reality that what happened in the villages the means where it is fixed that the only the women can be a sarpanch there the women are uh, elected as a sarpanch but all the functions all the duties of as a sarpanch are performed by the husband of that woman so this is the reality that is there so next we have the 74th amendment act now 74th amendment act introduced the 12th schedule the 11th schedule was the panchayati raj the 12th schedule is the municipality so this uh, 74th amendment this 74th amendment introduced the municipality by the 12th schedule of the indian constitution by the 12th schedule of the indian constitution a municipality was introduced So, so 74th amendment and 73rd amendment are generally asked in most of the examination that uh, which amendment talks about the municipality or which schedule of the Indian Constitution talks about the municipality. So this is the municipality 74th amendment 1992 and the 12th schedule was introduced. 
Then we come to the 86th amendment. 86th amendment is a very famous amendment of the 2002 in which education was made a compulsory and a fund, matha, fundamental right and article 21A that we have discussed while we were discussing the fundamental right. Article 21A was introduced which conferred on all children of the age group of 6 to 14 years the right to free and compulsory education. So, making right to free and compulsory education a fundamental right, the 86th amendment 2002 introduced Article 21A. Article 21A of the Indian constitution was introduced which made it compulsory, free and compulsory education for 6 to 14 years of age was conferred. That is the 86th amendment act 2002. This is very important in uh, introduction of Article 21A for the compulsory free and compulsory education for the children of the age group 6 to 14 years. That is the 86th Amendment Act 2002. Then we come to the 91st Amendment. So we know that uh, most of you those who have appeared in class 2020, they must have read that the total the, the total Council of Minister, the size of the Council of Minister should not be more than 15% of the total number of the member of the house. Recently, we have seen that there was a cabinet reshuffle. There was a cabinet reshuffle because there were many barriers because this present NDA government is having a vast majority in the Lok Sabha. So, 91st amendment put a bar that the size of the council of minister at the center, it should not be more than 15% of the total number of member of the house. Now, 93rd Amendment Act 2005. The 93rd Amendment Act 2005, it introduced the reservation for the socially and educationally backward classes beside the scheduled class and scheduled tribe in private unaided education institution. So, apart from the scheduled class and scheduled tribe, the other socially, the SEBC, you know, the SEBC recently you must have seen the Supreme Court judgment, the 127th Amendment, even Lighting Dreams has uploaded a blog on the same, the 127th Amendment which, which gave the power to the state to make a list of the SEBC that is the socially and educationally backward classes. However, in the Maratha reservation judgment, the Supreme Court has held that only the president has the power to make the list of the SEBC and the OBCs. So, this is 93rd amendment which provided reservation for the socially and educationally backward classes in the private unaided institution. Private unaided institution. Now, this is 99th amendment. So, whenever we talk about the pendency of the cases in the Supreme Court, we generally discuss the 99th amendment act. 99th amendment act introduced the National Judicial Appointment Commission. Now, at present, the appointment of the judges, as we have discussed in the in the judiciary part, that the president appoints the chief justice in the consultation with the other judges of the Supreme Court. The other judges of the Supreme Court are appointed by the president in consultation with the chief justice of India. The judges of the High Court are appointed by the president in consultation with the chief justice of India and the chief justice of that particular state High Court and the judges of that particular state High Court if the president think it is necessary. Now, this 99th amendment that is 2014, it introduced the National Judicial Appointment Commission. The National Judicial Appointment Commission was introduced. However, it was struck down by the Supreme Court. This 99th amendment that is the National Judicial Appointment Commission, it was in, it was struck down by the Supreme Court. Supreme Court tell that this is, this will not be the correct way for the appointment of the judges. Now, the 100 amendment act 2015, the 100 amendment act 2015, it ratified there is a share of the land and the boundary between the India and Pakistan. There is a land agreement between India and Pakistan by the so, we have discussed while we were discussing the union and its territory under article 1, 2, 3, 4. We have discussed that time that how the boundaries are exchanged, how, in, uh, how India can acquire a boundary. This all we have discussed in the case also. So, in the similar way, 100 Amendment Act 2015, it, there was a land agreement between the India and Bangladesh. Now, 101st Amendment, a very famous 2017, our former finance minister, Sri Arun Jetli has introduced this GST. And, uh, GST, we know all, it was introduced by the 101st Amendment Act 2017, the Goods and Service Tax, 101st Amendment Act 2017. The 102 Amendment Act 2018, it constituted a national commission for backward classes. So, the government was working as we all know that by the 103rd amendment 10% reservation for the economic weaker section of the class was given. 
है ना रिसेंटली इवन द मद्रास हाईकोर्ट हैज टोल्ड दैट रिसेंटली टू थिंग्स हैपेंड फर्स्ट दैट द गवर्नमेंट हैज गिवन दिस टेन परसेंट ई डब्ल्यू एस एंड ट्वेंटी सेवन परसेंट ट्वेंटी सेवन परसेंट टू द ओ बी सी इन ऑल इंडिया कोटा है ना इन ऑल इंडिया कोटा टू द फॉर द मेडिकल है ना ऑल इंडिया कोटा फॉर द मेडिकल सीट्स now by madras high court while examining the validity of this it has upheld the 27% reservation that is given to obc for the all india quota but for the 10% for the economy weaker section in the all india quota they have told that this will be subject to the decision of the supreme court because this economic weaker section 10% reservation is given is being pending in the supreme court so first by the 102nd amendment act 2018 by the 102nd amendment in 2018 the government constituted a national commission for the backward classes okay and then by the 103rd amendment act 2019 a maximum of 10% reservation for the economic and weaker section was introduced by the government so this two article amendment are interrelated now the 104th amendment yesterday while we were discussing the parliament i have told you that no more the president nominate to anglo indian community this is the 104th amendment that remove the reserve seat for the anglo indian community in the lok sabha and the state assembly therefore no more the governor and the president or the president appoint or uh, sorry nominate to uh, anglo indian community in the lok sabha so it was the 104th amendment which removed this anglo indian community by that technique that was continuing from the history okay then the last amendment as of 26th august as of 26th august 2021 is the 105th amendment act that is the see the president of india recently granted assent to the constitution 105th amendment act which empowered the state to identify and specify socially and educationally backward class just 3 minutes before i was discussing the same thing that the government has passed the 127th act which empowered the state to identify and specify the socially educationally backward classes which was hold which was held by the supreme court in the maratha judgment that only the president have the power to make this list but by the 105th amendment act the government has the it has been empowered to the state to specify the socially and educationally backward classes this are all the important amendment that are made up to 26th of august 2021 in the indian constitution and as a law student as a law student it is very important for you to know what are the important amendment so i hope it is clear to everyone just write in the chat box if you have any doubt you can ask if it is clear then just write in the chat box that it's clear okay yeah sure i will be sending today today after completing this schedule part uh, just we will be completing this schedule part in the next 5 to 6 minute after that i will be sending this document in the group don't worry okay yeah so now we come to the uh, someone has asked the 100 amendment see the 100 amendment it uh, it was the agreement for the um, land boundary agreement between india and bangladesh when we were discussing the union and the territory under article 124 we have discussed we have discussed the how the boundary of any country is acquired or how it is converted if we are exchanging also that we have discussed under article 2 and 3 and 4 so this is the 100 amendment which there was a land boundary agreement between india and bangladesh now we come to the important schedules of the indian constitution the first schedule so this is 1 2 3 4 it is written that is according to the schedule as we know that there are a total of a 12 schedule in the indian constitution so the first schedule it contain the list of the state and the union territories and their territories okay the first schedule of the indian constitution contain the list of the state and the union territories okay this is the first schedule of the indian constitution now second schedule the second schedule it talks about the privileges and allowance 
which are given to the president governor speaker deputy chairman and the chairman and all those things whatever the provisions for the president governor the, their privileges their allowance that they that is given to them are being discussed in the second schedule so if the, if the question come that second schedule deal with that you will be writing the provision related to privileges and allowance of the president governor and all then the third schedule it talks about the oath and affirmation whatever oath whether it is the president whether it is the prime minister whether it is the governor whether it is the speaker or whether it is the chief justice of india whatever oath they are making or affirmations they are making is being discussed in the schedule 3 of the indian constitution then schedule 4 talks about the allocation of the seat in the rajya sabha we know the uh, allocate seats are allocated to the rajya sabha on the basis of the state so the 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 allocation that is being done to the rajya sabha that is the council of state is being discussed in the fourth schedule now the fifth schedule is for the scheduled area the provision relating for the scheduled area uh, and the scheduled tribe we know that for example if you take nagaland there are special area designated to them in the manipur it is there okay before we are in the jammu kashmir also there so the fifth schedule it, it is the provisions having or relating to the scheduled area are contained in the fifth schedule now this is article 6 it is article 6 uh, sorry schedule 6 various time for if, if when you have those who have prepared for cat 2020 okay or those who are matlab keeping a uh, eye on the news you must have uh, gen maximum time this question come that the sixth schedule of the indian constitution applies to which of the following state so the sixth schedule it is for the provision relating to the uh, for the areas that is assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram that tribal areas the sixth schedule deal with the tribal areas of assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram this is a very famous question of polity that the sixth schedule of the indian constitution is for which of the following states so it, the option are assam meghalaya tripura mizoram and e is all of the above so the correct answer will really be e or sometimes they give the first three and another is changed for example in place of manipur sorry in place of mizoram they will give manipur in place of assam they will give west bengal in place of tripura they will give andhra pradesh so you have to remember that the sixth schedule of the indian constitution has provision for assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram then the seventh schedule is relating with the union and state and concurrently so we know very nicely okay when we were discussing the introduction and the historical background of the indian constitution that time we have discussed this union list state list and concurrent list so the seventh schedule it talks about the division of the power that is the union state list and concurrent list then eighth schedule the eighth schedule is talk is uh, it talks about the recognized languages okay the eighth schedule it talks about the list of recognized languages of the indian constitution okay uh, where we have at present 22 languages at present 22 languages has been uh, are considered as a recognized language under eighth schedule 22 languages we have now there now schedule 9 it talks about the validation of the acts the acts and the regulations that are passed by the parliament or the legislative assembly the what is their validity is being talked in the 9th schedule the, the 10th schedule just now we have discussed the 52nd amendment act that is the defection anti defection law okay this is a very famous question this is asked even in upsc the anti defection law that is the 10th schedule and the 52nd amendment these two thing you have to remember okay that 10th schedule is done that is the anti defection law disqualification of the member that is done thus 11th schedule the 11th schedule is the panchayat just now we have discussed in the 73rd amendment so for the panchayat you have to remember 11th schedule and the 73rd amendment and the balwant rai mehta committee it was the recommendation of the it was the recommendation of the balwant rai mehta committee that the panchayati raj institution was instituted in our country india so whenever we are talking about panchayat you have to remember the 11th schedule the 73rd amendment act and the balwant rai mehta committee and the last schedule of the indian constitution is the municipality the power the authority the responsibility the function okay the roles of the municipality is discussed in 12th schedule so for the municipalities also we have to remember the 12th schedule and the 74th amendment act this three the, uh, this two things we have to remember for the 
municipality so these are the important schedule from the first schedule to the 12th schedule as a law student as a law aspirant you must be knowing that which schedule of the indian constitution talk generally the most famous that is asked are the first is the schedule 6 that is the provision of the tribal area schedule 8 schedule 10 schedule 11 and schedule 12 once again i am repeating schedule 6 schedule 8 schedule 10 11 and 12 these are the important schedule of the Indian constitution that is generally asked in the polity question. So, we are done with the just move to the front. We are done with the part 3 of the Indian constitution that is fundamental right. First of all, we started with the historical background done. We discussed the introduction of the constitution done, preamble done. Then we move to the part 3 of the Indian constitution. Before that, we discuss the part 1 that is union and territory, part 2 that is the citizenship, part 3 we have discussed fundamental right. We discuss all the important case laws and all the important fundamental right. Then we came to the after the fundamental right, we discussed the directive principle of state policy from 36 to 51 of the part 4 of the Indian constitution. We discuss all the important, whatever are the important, we discuss the uniform civil code in detailed. Okay. Then we came to the executive part that is part 5 where we discuss about the president, the governor, the vice president. Then we move to the parliament, the council of minister. We discuss the uh, about the Lok Sabha, the Rajya Sabha. Then we move to the duration of the house, all about the conduct of the business of the parliament, the chairman, the speaker. Then we move to the um, then we move to the Indian judiciary where we discuss about all the important articles related to the Indian judiciary. Then we talked about the important amendment in the Indian constitution up to 26th of June 2021 and the last we discussed the schedules of the Indian constitution all the important schedules of the Indian constitution okay 